All right, folks, hello, and welcome back to another quick UE5 tutorial. And in this tutorial today, I'm going to be going over the basics of setting up um, animations for your AIs. Um, so if, you, um, you know, if you've been following my work, I've been going over some uh, quick UE5 short tutorials to really help uh, beginners um, you know, understand how certain things works. That way they could just you know, use it and integrate it in their projects and, and go from there. Now, one of the most recent uh, tutorials I have posted was how to set up pedestrians um, to have your, you know, your AIs walking along a sidewalk or a road, anything like that. So if you do want to um, know how to do that, uh, I'll link that video in the description down below. However, as you can see, we are in a third person template. So this is a brand new project, brand new third person template as usual. This is generally the template I always use for my tutorials. Now, for that tutorial in regards to the pedestrians, I, I had made all my pedestrians um, walking by default. And so something that, you know, some people might want to know is, well, what if you don't want them to be walking? What if you want them to be using a different kind of animation, such as running, jogging, maybe even falling? Now, the thing that you have to understand is for AIs, uh, for like NPCs that's just like on the sidewalk, you know, they're really not important. You know, they're just sort of there for uh, visual aesthetics or just, you know, to sort of take up space. <laughs> um, it's, it's definitely best to just use a simple animation asset. Now, what is that? So if you were to be in the content um, browser and yeah, you were to right click, you see here, this says create advanced uh, asset. So that means anything in this, in uh, anything in any of these uh, tabs are known as assets. So if, um, you know, if I'm referencing some sort of animation asset, that means I'm referencing any asset in this list that's under the animation tab. So if we wanted to change the um, animation asset, because let's say this was my pedestrian, right? If I was to simulate this by default, but he's just breathing. You see, this is a very um, standstill kind of animation. Literally, you just got some basic arm movement as well as, you know, um, shoulder raises because, you know, they're just breathing, inhaling and exhaling. That's all they're doing. So what if I wanted them to be walking by default or running? How would I set that up? Well, what you would not do is you would not use a state machine. Now, a state machine is kind of complicated, but it's not complicated. It's more of complex, but it's not difficult. It's just detailed. So let me briefly show you because I don't want to take up too much time. Um, but this is what a state machine looks like. So if we were to open up an animation blueprint, um, this is provided in the third person template, by the way, by default. And if I was to go over to, let's say, um, the APB uh, many third person BP, because if I'm not mistaken, the Quinn is just a child. As you can see here, this is a child. So yeah, if we were to be in this one. Now, what we have here is locomotion, land, to land, falling, jump, a, a different, a different, uh, well, a variety of different states. Now, these are known as states because it's basically, that just means that, you know, in this uh, situation, um, play this animation or at this speed, switch to that animation or at this speed, blend between animations, stuff like that. Now, that might sound complicated, which is why I'm not even going to be going over what this <laughs> what this setup is, is, is actually showing you. Um, I'm just showing you that this is what a state machine looks like. And you don't need this to uh, do the things that I was talking about in, in regards to like the pedestrian uh, tutorial. So if you wanted to um, know more about this, I can. At some point in the future, I'm, I probably am going to go over state machines. But if you want to sort of like request it, um, let me know. And then I can see, you know, how fast I can I can get that done um, for you. Now, what we are going to be going over is how to change the animation being used. So if I was to navigate. Um, OK, well, this is actually called BP third person character. So let's actually open up this. Um, um, Blueprint. Now to do that, you go to third person blueprints, third person BP, third person character. There we go. Now, if I was to click on the uh, actual um, person, and then I was to go down to the animation mode, this is this is where you would set up the animation asset that you wanted to use. So let's briefly go over what all this means. 
Okay, so let's go over the main two important animation features that we are going to be needing to edit to do uh, any sort of animation asset changes. That is the animation mode, which is right here, as well as the animation class. Now the advanced is, um, we could talk about that in a minute, um, but let's go over this. So the animation mode, this is using, it, oh, excuse me, <laughs> the, the first, uh, the default option says use animation blueprint. Now that is what we've already talked about in regards to this being a state machine, not complicated, just complex and very detailed. Now, if we wanted to use an animation asset, then we would switch the animation mode over to use animation asset. And now any animation asset that we have available in the game, I mean, um, in the content browser or in our project. So if I was to right click and go to animation, anything that we have in regards to these um, um, kinds of animation assets, they will be available to use um, um, in this uh, section in this uh, animation display. So if I, um, as you can see, you have different colors, you have like red and green. Um, if I had like an animation montage, it would be in there too, stuff like that. So as you can see, this is a variety of um, different assets. Now, let's say I wanted the person to be walking. Now you would have a, a couple of them. So the blend space, you wouldn't use a blend space to for an animation assets for something like this, because a blend space is just blending between two different ad, um, animations. So if I was to click on, let's say, walk, run, as you can see, walk, run is blending between walk and run. Um, well, you could tell that in the title, but if you were to actually double click on it and then open it, you can see um, we here we have the uh, walk forward and then the run forward over here. So that's what a blend space does. So you wouldn't use a blend space for what we're trying to do here. What you use is the actual walking animation. Now, you only have two different kinds. Well, OK, in this case, we have three. But the walking place is literally self-explanatory. That's one thing I do like about the default assets is that they are that the titles is very accurate. So the walking place is literally walking in place. This would not be a walking forward animation because as you can see it just looks like um. You know, the person is just walking in place. Like, I guess if they're about to start, like, you know, uh, running a race, you know, they're just walking in place, loosening the joints. That's what they would do. But if we wanted a sort of walk forward animation, you would click on um, the walk forward. Now, we have two different ones. We have MF and MM. If you were to look closely, they are two different animations because you can see this one is, is, is uh, vertical and, you know, kind of speedy, you know, just a simple walk. But um, if we were to go to MM, you would have something vertical too, but a bit slower. So I'm pretty sure the MF stands for um, Manny Female, and then the MM stands for like Manny Male. Don't quote me on that. I'm, I'm really not sure. But regardless, they are different animations. So if I wanted, the, let's say I like this one better, I will compile and save after choosing it. So, you know, go to Animation to Play, search and walk, choose the animation. Compile save. I literally just did it. <laughs> um, and then if I hit simulate, now we have the animation uh, of walking. So you know, if I set, if I um, you know, did the information I provided in my previous tutorial for um, pedestrian uh, setup, then that means my pedestrians would now be walking. Now, if I was to switch this, um, switch switch this animation to a run, now we have. Let's say I wanted to use this running animation. Compile and save, and now I can even have one of my um, 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 AIs running, and then I can actually drag out another one, pause that, um, go to that, and let's open up. Um, oh, actually, hold on. I have to duplicate this. So if I wanted to like have them doing two different animation assets, and then what I would do is duplicate. Let's just call this BP third person character one, drag that out, open this, do the exact same thing, but instead let's change this to a walking. So now we have a walking, pause, save. So now if I was to simulate, I would have one person running down the street, probably running from the cops or something, or running from the ops because they're about to get lit up. And then we have one person walking uh, in, a, in a rush. Maybe they're at the mall or trying to get that parking space back to the car. Who knows? <laughs> Regardless, this is how you would set up different animation assets um, available to use. Now, if you wanted to retarget 
an animation. That means that you wanted an animation to be used for a different kind of skeleton. That's a, that's way more detailed. Um, it's not difficult, but it would just it would be in a different tutorial in which I would go over how to retarget animations. So if that's something you'd be interested in, let me know in the comments down below, and I could definitely make something for that. Um, otherwise, I'll just add it to my list and something that I'll eventually go over at some point in the future. That said, hopefully you can use this animation to easily, um, I mean, um, use this information to easily change certain animations to really help your project come more to life. And, you know, plus you could take that knowledge from there to, to know, to learn even more about animation than what I went over in this tutorial. So without further ado, folks, I'm going to go ahead and leave you to the, you know, the rest of your day. Hopefully you're making good progress in your projects, because like I always say, using UE5 is definitely difficult when you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> and as a beginner, I know the vibes. With that said, best of luck to you and your endeavors, and I'll see you around.